Coffee enough? Yeah. Anything to grab before we go? Bathroom? Yeah, no. It's like nurses in training going to be holding it. So, okay. All right. Awesome. Yes. Hey. Very familiar. Very familiar <laughs> with that. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, we're going to go ahead and get going here in a sec, right? Is it 10 5 yet? Almost. It is. Yes. Almost. Okay. So, um, I'll do that. I'll grab my, I have notes. Just to make sure I don't forget something. Okay. Ta -da -da. All right. So, how are you doing? We're almost ready? Mikkel Schneider is the president and CEO, board member, and a minority owner of Nightingale College, a Salt Lake City-based private post-secondary distance education institution dedicated to advancing geographic, demographic, and socioeconomic access to professional nursing education across the United States. A registered nurse of more than 25 years, Schneider has a wealth of management experience in post-secondary education for health professions and healthcare delivery services. He's a published academic author, conference speaker, and guest lecturer especially in strategic planning, accreditation, forecasting, organizational development, and leadership. Schneider holds a MBA degree from UC Berkeley's Hall School of Business. So, Michaela Schneider. Here I am. Thank, 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 thank you, Sammy. Thank you all for that uh, welcome. Okay, I would like to introduce, uh, obviously everybody have met Sammy already. Uh, and uh, I introduce a couple of other uh, folks here. Uh, Dr. Audrey Auer, there in the first row. Uh, Dr. Auer is our Director of uh, Nursing Education uh, Services. And uh, we have Rob back there. I don't know if the camera can see him or not, but uh, uh, he manages our partnerships uh, in, in this region and some other places. Um, and so welcome to uh, Nightingale College, everybody. Okay, I, like I hear some things, that's <laughs> very good. Y yeah, awesome, everybody's ready for this? Yeah. yeah, everybody's ready to go to school, fantastic. We, um, uh, uh, you're not the only ones. Uh, by the way, everybody in uh, virtual cyberland, hello. Uh, we're coming to you from a very chilly uh, Denver or near Denver, uh, Colorado. 
uh, very stormy, kind of very bumpy. <laughs> My flight took, uh, landed on the second attempt yesterday, so that was good. Yay. The first one was, you know, we're almost there, almost there, almost there, and then whew, went back up. I was like, okay, yay. I'm good. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm just good. Um, anyway, so uh, we have, I'll, I'll give you some numbers later, but uh, we have new learners across the nation tuning uh, into this. We have almost 600 of uh, newbies across the country, everywhere from Alaska to Pennsylvania to Florida, everything in between. So uh, again, welcome everybody. Uh, we're glad you're here. Now, I only have one job today, really, and, and that's to talk you out of it. So, they're like, <laughs> yay, people, 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 how are we doing with that? Yeah, okay. And it truly is, right? Because it is, it is a long journey, it's a tough journey, it's, it's, it's just all that stuff that you've heard is true. Nursing school is tough, um, although this particular one, you know, allows you some flexibility and, and uh, going remotely, doing stuff uh, online, it still is tough. And you still have to put in your time and energy and all of that. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about today. And hopefully by the end of today, you'll make, uh, th this is our last attempt, you know how through admissions process, you were all um, asked uh, to, uh, you, you know, kind of think about it and, and talk to people, your employer. How many people are working? Uh, I thought so. So uh, most everybody uh, is working through this, and so it could be uh, tough, right, unless your employer is supporting you. And it could be tough unless somebody's doing your laundry. Uh, so yeah, otherwise you stink, you know. It's like, I have somebody, <laughs> somebody who does it for me. I'm very thankful uh, all the time in order to do this job. But, but your job as a learner is, uh, is even tougher. So um, anyway, so what, what, what am I trying to do today? Talk you out of it, exactly. And you're gonna help me do that, you know, talking you out of it. Uh, before we go to that though, uh, I, I'm gonna ask you this. So why are you here? Why are you here? And everybody there in the Cyberland, look, you can, you can uh, I think there's a chat, right? Yeah, there's a chat thingy that's going. And uh, uh, so you can throw your thoughts in the chat, uh, answers to these questions. We're not going to necessarily, uh, uh, it, I, I'm not gonna necessarily interact with you because I have good people here, uh, but uh, nevertheless, please, uh, please engage and participate uh, online. So uh, why are you here? Why are you here? Okay, and I know this is a loaded question, right? So like, I'm here on Earth because, and if you wanna go that route, fantastic. Let me know about that. Or, uh, you know, how, so however you want to frame this question, why are you here? I get it, you're sitting here right now because we told you to be here. Or it's like, pretty please come in or dial in because you have to participate in this new learner welcome forum in order to continue uh, on beyond today uh, at Nightingale College. Yeah, okay, so, so that aside, why are you here? Finish my education. Finish your education, okay, tell me more. Um, bachelor's degree, definitely want a bachelor's degree, already a nurse, so definitely just want. Okay, fantastic, so you're an RN already? No, I'm an LPM going for your bachelor's uh, and then RM licensure. Okay, so continuing education, finishing education. Anybody else in that? In that? Uh, okay, a, a few. Fantastic. Yay! Welcome, uh, licensed practical nurses, licensed vocational nurses out there as well. Uh, fantastic. It's it's an awesome, uh, an awesome thing that you uh, decided to do to continue contributing to this. Okay, why else? Why are you here? Yes, you need this degree. Project. Exact the change that I want to see. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. To 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 kind of to to drive change forward. I need this degree in order to be able to do that. Uh, tell me more, please. Well, I've been an LPN, LVN, wherever yeah. you are in the country for twenty-four years. Wow! Thank you. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And. <clears throat> In that 24 years, I was a paramedic, I was a CNA, I was, you know, all of these things, and 
I have done a lot of the education and the management in nursing, but because I don't have this degree, it's kind of null and void. And so I need this degree uh, to be able to exact the change that I would like to see. Gotcha. So, 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 so a degree per perhaps uh, gains some credibility uh, with others, right? Not that you, you know you have some skills, you have expertise. Mm -hmm. So this is further honing that skills and expertise, and then using the degree to, to drive change forward and uh, be, uh, be credible uh, with other, uh, with our medicine colleagues and, and uh, other uh, allied health professionals and perhaps the government, right? Hey, why not? Change, change, uh, you know, in a workplace, that's only the beginning. And then like we have to, we have to drive a lot of it forward in order for the health of this nation to really to improve. And we need really, really, really uh, dialed in nurses that understand how to affect change and, and how to drive it forward. As a matter of fact, uh, all of you, uh, so I'm assuming some of you are going to be taking GEs, general education this semester. Yeah, so for those of you who are taking general education, this semester, unless I talk you out of it, right? Um, uh, uh, we, we, that this this next thing that I'm going to talk about will happen next semester for you. Those of you who are going into your first nursing course with us will participate in the future of nursing uh, a, a, a workshop that we do. We will be broadcasting it from Reno uh, this semester, but uh, you know you will be online doing the chatty chatty thing and it's like oh yeah I've seen them in 3D before <laughs> so um, not, not as bad anyway so, so where we will talk in the future of nursing workshop and we will talk about the kind of the, the state of uh, healthcare as we see it today and then um, we're gonna try figuring out together what it is that nurses can do what what is it that this profession can do all nurses uh, in order to uh, make some changes uh, within the country. So, so really, really good aspirational goal. Fantastic uh, to to drive the change forward. Um, awesome. Now, let let me throw this at you a little bit. I know some, you know, some of you said you're practical, uh, licensed practical nurses, licensed vocational nurses. You've been, you know, in service. Uh, uh, to the patients, to the commu community for a while. So you carry a lot of uh, expertise and skills with you. Now, I, I'm, I'm gonna challenge you to continue developing uh, because this is not just at the end of the day completing the bachelor's degree, for example, or associates. Some uh, there's, there's a few uh, LPM to associates learners that we have. Uh, in this incoming cohort. So uh, completing, you know, continue uh, getting your degrees and completing that, it's not all about, uh, it's not at all about the diploma that you get at the end, right? The piece of paper that you receive. It's about the process and the journey and what you gain through it. Okay, so that said, why are you here? What else? You, you, had, you had your hand up before. Um, to just dive deeper into wound care and specialize into that. Okay, so maybe gain some specialty, yeah, some micro credential at the end that that um, and 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 be able to uh, be a very specialized specialist. Fantastic, that's that's awesome. Other things, why are you here? Come on, there must be other thoughts. Those of you who are not nurses yet, yes, please. To learn the valuable skills that are necessary to work in the healthcare um, field and to be a good role model for my children. Awesome. Okay. So A, to learn to be able to work in the field, yeah, and have the skills and the, the, the knowledge that's needed, develop reasoning while you add it, uh, which is very, very important. But that second thing is amazing, right? Be a role model for my children. Anybody else? Anybody else in that boat? Uh, that that I want, yeah, I want to show my kids, right? If if I can do it, they can do it, and and uh, it'll be absolutely possible. And so, yeah, many many learners come uh, to us with that goal in mind, right? To 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 be able to be an example, to be able to model some things for their kids, and and so fantastic, yay! Other things, why are you here? Come on, yes, please. 
I'm here to transform myself from being an accountant to a real estate in nursing career. So career, complete career change. Uh, you will not be the first accountant going through this. We have had we have had a few over the years, but yeah. So and and what? What? Why? Why go from accounting to nursing? It seems more interesting. Ah, uh, more interesting. <laughs> something new to learn. Something new to learn. Yeah, continue, constantly evolving, right? So this learning that you're starting today will not end. Uh, today, I mean, it may, it may, right? Because I have to talk you out of it. Uh, but but if you continue on, then then and and you know through the first two weeks, and then on and on and on and on, learning becomes lifelong in this profession, and it has to be because we things constantly evolve. Our knowledge, our knowledge base as as a profession, constantly evolves. Uh, technology constantly evolves, so you will have to learn from here on out to the rest and the, to the end of your career. So that's good. It's, uh, okay, so nursing is more interesting. Anything else about nursing that is attractive? Maybe like the earnings. The, the earnings, yeah, okay. Anybody else here for the earnings? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, just be real. Uh huh. Of course, it, it, it does pay well. Right and and uh, it's you know because of such misbalance as well of supply and demand in the profession the way there is continuous upward pressure on the wages uh, it's not necessarily all, all like all fantastic we need more nurses you know keeping it short just to keep the wages up isn't necessarily a great outcome for you know for for the for the population health but nevertheless. The, 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 the perks are there, the wages are there, the, the benefits, so on, uh, uh, are there. Now, it may not come right away, right? You have to, you know, sort of work your way into it and through it. And, and yeah, those of you, anybody Grey's Anatomy? Yeah, or like any, any Chicago Mads or like whatever fans on TV, yeah. You know, like, ooh, yeah, it's like, drips and all of that, right? And how the city of Chicago is standing, I have no idea. With, I mean, it's like everything is burned, either burned or blown up or whatnot. And, and so, but, but, but again, the, it's not, it's, you, you're not gonna find yourself when, when you're working in the profession. You're not gonna find yourself on a uh, TV show set, right? It is not, it is not a TV show. It's not uh, uh, as glamorous as uh, you know the thing may be portraying the TV show shows may be portraying. And the, the when we talk about the future of nursing, you will learn that the ICU per se or or anybody need you need you like that was like oh no wow that's oh yeah okay. Yeah, uh, all right. So 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 perhaps there's some NICU fans out there. I know it's like you know, sick babies are my favorite thing. And, and, and I want to help sick babies. Okay, and that's fantastic. Uh, you're probably not going to end up in NICU right away. Uh, and, and again, you, you have to work through, you know, nights and weekends and, and, and uh, settings that are perhaps not as uh, exciting as you may think or perceive them to be, however, if you really allow yourself to immerse into, into this profession and immerse into different types of care and different settings and all of that, you will find that it is as, as exciting and as caring for an older adult uh, with, with perhaps some uh, uh, dementia issues is as exciting as, you know, sick babies. <laughs> and so, so yeah, it, it's it keep your keep your mind open. You know, again, if that's if you move on to us today, because you know I haven't even started. I'm just we're just exploring why you're here before I start talking you out of it. So other things. So financial peace is important, right? And and what you're gonna do with the money when 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 it's there? Come on, the what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Prada shoes, Prada shoes, right? Like some, something very glamorous for your feet. I, you know, if not comfortable. 
but but at least glamorous. Okay, well, anything else besides Prada shoes? Travel. Travel. Very good. Okay, see the world. You know, immerse in other cultures. Travel. Okay, what else? Uh, yeah, they, they also, yes, you will need earnings to pay off the loans. Now, this is my first point of talking you out of it. Uh, anybody independently wealthy in this room or out there, if you're independently wealthy, throw it into the chat. <laughs> like, I, you know, because I want to talk to you later on just, just, just to ask why. Uh, and how did you get there? Uh, now, so nobody, nobody in this room. Okay. So uh, everybody is uh, already probably, you know, some of you have accountants, uh, student loans, right, from before perhaps, and if, even if you don't, you're likely to finance your education, you likely will be taking that on. Now, don't. That's, that's my advice to you, don't. Because after you take it out, guess what? You're on a hook for it. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Student loans are never discharged, even if you file bank bankruptcy. Student loans will stay with you until they're paid. So unless you're actually planning on paying them, don't. How can you make sure that you will have enough earnings to pay for student loans. Finish school. Finish school, yes, step number one, finish school. <laughs> step number two, get licensed in, 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 as, as an RN, or we have some uh, PM learners that are starting their PM uh, journey at this point. So yay, get a license, you know, and then use that license to get a job that pays perhaps better than what you have now, and then part of that income, you know, give it back to whomever it is lended it to usually federal government. Um, so yeah, everybody, everybody, okay. In order to finish school, what has to happen? You have to go to school. Yeah, you, you have to, yeah. <laughs> yes. So it can't be like, you know, if, if this guy had a magic wand, if I was Oprah, really, I'd be like, you get, you know, you get a license and you get a license and everybody gets a license. Well, I'm not Oprah. So I don't have that magic power. And so you actually have to go to school and do the work, which did I already mention that it's a lot of it? Mm -hmm. A lot of work in order to be able to A, you know, first, like before you finish school, you, and, you know, between going to school and finishing school, there's, there's courses. There are all sorts of different coursework that's within those courses that you have to engage in, like constantly, constantly, <laughs> freezing. <laughs> I know, right? It's like they're keeping us on ice. Now I understand how comedy stays so fresh. It's, we're in a comedy club, everybody, uh, here. So, so yeah, it's, it's um, anyway, so a lot of coursework, you have to then, uh, pass the courses. You have to complete other sort of progression and matriculation requirements that, that keep you going toward that finishing the school. And then af even if after you're done with your coursework, there's some other requirements. We had a grad, not quite a grad, a pending grad, that finished their coursework, and this is, you know, I'll tell you a few anecdotes, finished their coursework in December. We're in April now, and about a couple of weeks ago, they sent a, a, an email, I was copied on it, and, and said, you know what, I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> Gave my diploma. A, a, a actual graduation requirement, which is engaging in licensing exam coaching with, with our faculty who are coaches, who, who you know, prepare you for, to send, make sure that you have more chances than not uh, of passing that exam. By the way, if you decide to stay, you're gonna engage with them. Uh, we're engaging earlier and earlier and earlier in, in your um, journey as a learner uh, with uh, coaching, and then uh, we're introducing some other standardized exam coaching for, for uh, HESI exams that you will be taking. And so it's, it's a good idea to do that. 
And then, even if you don't pass on the first attempt, maybe it HESI, maybe it's ANCLEX at the end of the day, make sure you continue engaging because that is there for you. That resource is always there for you. And so, but yeah, this, this one pending graduates, she's like, I don't want to do that. Uh, and, and we, what do you think our reply is? Do it. Tough. <laughs> I'm like, I wish it was a choice. Do you remember signing that, you know, on a, the, like a, a thing about the catalog? Mm -hmm. On a thingy, you know? You're gonna be signing it several times throughout. It's like, I still know that thing is valid, and I promise, and you know, to abide by it, and if I violate anything within it, then you know, there are consequences. Like not graduating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody good? Four months. Just sort of like, should I, should not? Should I, should not? Well, it's not costing you anything else. It's just asking you to engage. Because it's good for you. And through, you know, like building this, building this organization and, and its curriculum, and policies, and programs, and all of that, and catalog, I mean, trust us, we know a couple of things, you know, about adult learning and education and all of that. And nothing in there is just because, you know, I'm a whim. Right, because Mikhail thinks he's Oprah, and then just mm, <laughs> puts it in. Um, anyway, so okay, let's go back to the earnings. We, we kind of like we got we got there, right? How how do you get to those earnings to pay off the loans, uh, so on and so forth? Any other reasons for you being here? Legacy. Legacy. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. That that's like that's a heavy word. Tell me more, please. Legacy in that I've got three sons. You know, I want to be able to earn the money so that I can, and I don't want to work as hard as I do currently. Um, but to be able to leave to my children in the event that you know something happens, legacy in that you know I've got nieces and nephews and other you know little kids yeah. that are around. You know. I'm the only nurse in my family. You know, I'm the only healthcare professional, period. So just things like that. That's okay, that all right. So, so kind of, again, this future generation thing and leaving something behind. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, though. Uh, I, you know, you'll be working as hard as you're working now. If, 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 if not harder, I mean, like, to leave a legacy or to drive change forward or, you know, any, yeah. I like. I thought this this would be an easier job, right? To like to do, and mm -mm. it's not. <laughs> it's not as intense as 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 far as be doing that side care, but 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 it's you know, uh, if if we are to see that change, right? All of us have to come into, uh, it, it, you know, working working hard, working working smart, reasoning, doing all of that good stuff. Okay, other things, other things. Why are you here? Yes, please. Um, I have a special needs son, so I want to further my education so I better know how to help him and people in my community. Okay, fantastic. So, so uh, 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 do, doing it because you want to both support your child, but then but then support support other people uh, in in the community. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, we um, uh, just just an anecdote too. You may encounter. Uh, Dion, uh, in your in, as, a, as a faculty member uh, here in your courses, but uh, so this woman who was a PM um, some years ago came to us and said, "Nobody will admit me. Nobody will admit me uh, into nursing schools." They're telling me I cannot do this. Uh, so she's profoundly deaf, and uh, and and so we're like, "Well, uh, I think we can. You know, we can facilitate." your learning and facilitate uh, uh, your progress. So she enrolled in an associate's program at the time. She was the valedictorian of her, of her cohort. Yay! Okay, and then and then uh, she went on to her bachelor's, did the RN to BSN, was valedictorian there once again, completed her master's now in nursing education. And so, and her goal is, 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 is Big and she's like, I want to make this education available to people like me, right? Because I'm not, you know, I'm very able, 
it, it is just, you know, I need, I need somebody to A, give me an opportunity, and B, believe in me, and, and C, help me out, right? And then I'll, I'll, I'll so, so she, she's paying that forward. That's, you know, that's a legacy, right? That's leaving something behind, so, so uh, good stuff. All right, anything else? Any, any, so, so financial reasons, sort of uh, legacy reasons, uh, being an example to your kids' reasons, getting into something perhaps more meaningful than accounting. Although anybody, if you're an accountant and listening to this, like I love accountants. Yes, I'm pretty good at numbers myself. However, I'm not very passionate about it, right? So, so I guess what nursing offers is, is connecting, being able to connect your passion into uh, what you do. And so that's, uh, that's an, an important piece. Okay, so uh, l let me pause. Let me ask uh, so far questions, comments, anything, anything before we continue going forward. No, okay, everybody's like ready for it. Okay, now whatever you think effort it is going to take for you to be successful, like from the get go, multiply that by two. And probably more. It literally requires your every waking minute. So here's the list of things that you will not be able to do while you're in school. Want to guess? Travel. The what? Travel. Travel, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had that too, like, oh, I have a vacation planned, I'm going. I'm like, uh, well, great, just not in school. Okay, so travel probably will not happen in the next however many months, years it takes you. What else? Just your general availability. Yeah, but availability for what? Hanging out. Hanging out, I know. So like Facebook, you know, like <laughs> write to 500 of your closest friends that you will be MIA in for the next, I don't know, three and a half years. <laughs> Uh, just do it today, you know. Uh, TikToking, uh-uh. <laughs> you do not have time, unless it's like some mad rhymes about some nursing subject, and you're like figured it out, and now you you know like rhyming for the rest of the world so everybody else can learn better. Fantastic, do that talk, but not the other. Tick. I, anyway, <laughs> however that works, you know, taking pictures of your food. Uh, and then posting it on Insta. No. No time. Uh huh. All you have time for is actually try chewing your food. What well, you know? And not like swallow like big you know chunks at a time without truly chewing it. So focus on chewing. More chewing. Less picture taking. Everybody good? So social media. I, you might as well like delete the account. Uh, you know, although uh, our social media folks would be like, no, 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 don't tell them that. <laughs> we want them engaging. However, that works. Like I, I still, you know, still unclear to me. And I was like, I'm all inners. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how that that entire world works. But, but you know, so keep it for the We Love Nightingale group or whatever it is on Facebook. Everything else you can delete. Um, so, anyway, so that, what else? What other d d distractions you have constantly? Aha, uh -huh, Bridgerton, <laughs> Netflix, Hulu, whatnot, pick your HBO Max, Disney Plus, there's so much, there's so much good stuff. It's like, oh wow, all of that will have to be happening without you, you know? You can binge all of the seasons of everything after you finish school and get licensed. Yay! After that, you know, if your employer allows you some time off, please binge all you want. Not till then. So, see, I already found a money saving ticket for you. Unsubscribe! 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 Unsubscribe, Joe Lippa can do without you. I mean, she'll be just fine. For real, Charlie, you know, as well. Sandy is a big fan. <laughs> uh, 
Those artists can do fine without you. And you do not have time to follow anything or anybody. But who? Yeah, the instructions of your faculty, really, and the facilitation that they provide to you, and all of that, and the feedback. You, there's a lot of reading there, right? You get feedback, you have to read, you have to process through it, you have to adjust something, and you have to submit it again, on and on and on. So, no time for anything else. Remember laundry? Yeah, no time for laundry. So those older kids, put them to work. <laughs> it's like, yep, yeah, mommy Snickers. <laughs> Go right there, fold, neatly, match the socks, together, find a pair. Yeah, it's a cool game, really. And you think your kids should learn, should learn how, to, how to play it. Uh, but seriously, I, somebody needs to make your food, right? And probably not Uber Eats. <laughs> I don't know, because that gets expensive. So, like, you know, your parents, your spouses, hopefully you work through all of this through the admissions process, right? Which, which stage was that? The very beginning first. The very beginning. It's a, it's a very good place to start in the very beginning, right? Uh, was it discover? Yeah, you were kind of like, and then commit? Yeah. So hopefully it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, yeah, check, 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 I've done it. And then you haven't talked to anybody. Uh huh. I'm like, I see you. Uh, <laughs> lots of time. Now, if you're not for real planning to put the time in, and guess what? In order for you to like really feel what it really feels like and takes, uh, we're giving you two weeks. Two weeks. Tuition free. Yay! Yeah. Starting today through the end of the ad drop period which is going to be on Friday, 13th. May 13th. Wow, very good. Somebody double check the date because I'm just, you know, going on. on it. Uh, uh, through that, 5 p.m. Mountain time. Lucky you in Denver. Mountain time is your time. So you get like, you know, uh, everybody else, Cyberland, uh, it is uh, uh, 5 p.m. Mountain. <laughs> which means 3 p.m. in Alaska, and those lucky people on the East Coast get it till 7 p.m. <laughs> your time on that day. See, they're starting a little later today, right? We're starting at 10 here. They started at noon. Hmm, go figure. I know. It's like, this is a big country. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're giving you until then to try it on for size, to see you know, so we're not going to charge you any tuition if you decide not to continue. Um, and and there, there, there may be, like, if, if you, I don't know, if you open some stuffs, you know, and use some stuffs, like kits or whatever, then, then you probably, there, there, there may be some fees. I don't know. So, like, unless you're really, really short, don't open anything that looks, really, like, really expensive, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, so tuition-free, first two weeks. So you can dial in the courses, you can, you can see what it's like, you probably, obviously, uh, you're not going to have, in the first two weeks, I don't think there's going to be any uh, experiential learning on ground, any SOFIs, so supervising the ground field experiences, uh, you won't have that, so, so you can't try that on, but, but it, it, is, it is a fun part of the learning, it's the application part, where you you know, go somewhere and like actual patients, clients, you work with people, applying your previously acquired skills and knowledge in that setting. So we cannot give it to you in the first two weeks, but everything else, essentially, a lot of it you can, you, you can try out to certainly how the didactic instruction works. Even if you're in general education courses, it'll give you a pretty good idea of what, uh, you know, navigating the learning management system, communicating with faculty, being constantly, you know, there's some hovers that are going to be around you. We'll call them learner support services. You know, there's some advisors you probably have met your advisor already. If not, they'll be they'll be in touch soon. So uh, and they'll they'll be hovering. I promise you, like the first semester, please hover back, as in engage back, because you know, remember, we know a thing or two. 
of how to set you up for success, and that, that's one of those things. So again, see if it works. You will right away notice that it takes a lot of time in order to be able to do what you must accomplish. Uh, and do it meaningfully and uh, uh, as an, oh, not meaningfully, mindfully, right? Reading something just, you know, when, when the words are in front of you and you're going through it and it doesn't make any sense, that's not mindful. You actually have to find meaning in, in, in what you're reading or what you're engaging with and so on. So going through the motions alone, like checking the boxes, is not going to get you to graduate and it is not going to get you to licensure. That's, that's the point, that, uh, uh, an important thing to remember from this. So engage mindfully with what you, is the task at hand. And because, not because, if you engage mindfully, then you will find that that takes a lot of time, right? And then you will find again, like TikToks and says all of that. It's like, you know the action? I catch myself every once in a while doing that, but like I don't have much social media, so like I, it's usually news, <laughs> and I get like lost in it, and then so I have like I have to set it down and, and focus on something else. Yeah, news can be a distraction as well. So just you know, focus on becoming uh, a, a nurse to begin with, or or becoming a registered nurse, uh, or continue your um, degree in education. We have a few. Um, graduate students as well, graduate learners uh, that are continuing on. Anyway, so, oh, I was supposed to like flip this, maybe, no, here, here's Sammy. <laughs> okay, um, where was I? Before I, you know, it's like a squirrel running, running across, <laughs> and I forgot, I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, 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 I was supposed to put that up a long time ago. Um, anyway. So, uh, um, questions on this, questions on the two weeks. When is, it, when is it due? Like, oh, oh, and if you like, and, and we encourage you to do this, uh, decide that this is not a great time right now, right? Perhaps you haven't arranged laundry that, like with anybody <laughs> and, and, and it's just impossible for you to do it in the next two weeks to really set it up for the next three some years. Uh, depending on how long you're, you're, you're going to school. Uh, you write us a note, you, you can send it to your learner support <coughs> services advisor, uh, you, can, you can send it to registrar, you can, you can just like send it, send it out, you know, send it to your admission folks, uh, uh, tell them, yeah, not a good time, you know, maybe I'll be back. And, and you know, and they're like, yay, yeah, great, we'll get it, we, 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 probably won't send you any kind of bow in return or anything like that. It will say, thank you, great. You know, if ever uh, in the future it's a good time, come back, right? So this is your job for the next two weeks. Figure out whether this is the right time for you and whether Nightingale College is a good fit and alignment for you. Right and 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 this because because learning online, really learning online, oof, takes a lot of self discipline. It takes quite a bit. So 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 maybe you will need somebody, you know, and maybe you can arrange it in the next two weeks. A person that is going to be a pusher constantly, right? Like, no, go go. You have to, you know. Parents are usually good at that. Do not let me off the hook, mama. <laughs> and she'll be like, there. Do it. So, so figure, figure that out. Uh, but by 5 p.m., if we don't hear from you, by 5 p.m. Mountain Time on Friday the 13th, apparently, allegedly. I think it is, <laughs> it is the 13th. Um, the, we will be like, on your ledger, which is that thing that, you know, where charges appear and payments and all of that, you will see a charge for the first two weeks, yay. <coughs> If you decide to stay, otherwise, boom, nothing goes away, and we kind of go like, okay, we cancel your enrollment agreement. You're good. On the hook, yay! Everybody happy. Why do you think 
we talk about it, or I, I talk about it so much. The fact that, you know, try it on, see if it works, go away. If it doesn't, if you don't think it, it will. It's a big commitment. It is a big commitment. It is a big commitment of your time. It is a big financial commitment as well. And so you have to, this is one of the largest financial commitments that you're going to make in your life. So do it carefully, right? I mean, if you're, if you're determined, if, you, if you're gonna go at it, if you're gonna push through obstacles, which is going to be a lot, if you decide that you're going to push through failure, which is going to be some, anybody like straight A, high school student? Yeah, awesome, fantastic. Not high school. I found this on the web. Oh, see, Siri always is helpful. To, to, you know, to tell me what she found on the web or uh, uh, it, it, as it concerns uh, straight A's in high school. Uh, so very different. And, and if you haven't really done any college work before, it's very different. And so, and uh, uh, you may, you know, oh, well this, oh, like math, right, right. This always came like real easy for me in, uh, in high school. This may be different. Math calculations can be like a little out there and a little, a little more complex. And so, 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 so uh, uh, again, time, time is needed, uh, dedication is needed, commitment is needed, and you have to make the commitment now, right? You have to make the commitment before what time? May thirteenth, five, 5 p.m. May 13th, 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. <laughs> We're still on Daylight Time in May, not standard. Uh, so yay, and Arizona, you figure it out for yourself because <laughs> I, have, I never know what time it's uh, So, right, it's like, because they don't change. Anyway, so, uh, and, and then uh, write to us if your decision is not to, not to continue move on. Is that like crystal clear, everybody is good? You understand why we're asking you to choose carefully? This thing, yeah, those people in the back, you guys, you know, you're kind of hiding in the back there, but I'm like, I see you. Yeah? Okay. So, all right. Now, we're going to talk about more than about obstacles and, and, and things of that nature. They do come. And uh, what I'm going to talk about it in the context of the... Um, Another commitment that we're asking you to make before you decide to continue, right? And this is not kind of like an optional thing. It is going to be required of you. It's commitment to this. You all have it in front of you. Uh, those of you in the cyberspace, you probably see it on the slide. Uh, it's on our website. It's called the Evolving to Statement. Uh, anybody knows what the evolving, what, what, what this means? What, what is the Evolving to Statement? for Nightingale College. It's a nice set of words, yes. That describe what? Okay, I'll help you. Our, the what? Our attitude. Attitude, yeah, you know, it's kind of kind of in the word, evolitude, right? So attitude is there, yeah. So, so it's a commitment, commitment to being a certain way, to behaving in a certain way, to engaging with others in a certain way. And, 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 and so we're going to work through this statement. Essentially, this is our value statement. And we're asking you as learners to make commitment to that. There's all other possibilities that, are, that, that, that could be possible, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit through it, of like what the opposite of the words that you see there. And the opposite is not necessarily bad. You know, like, well, I don't want to put a judgment on it uh, of any kind. It's just not conducive to your journey and your becoming uh, a nurse and your leaving a legacy and your continuing on to do to do whatever it is that you uh, decide you want to do. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it, you know, but, but, but the opposite side of it is human. It's very human. It's, it's you know, all of us have it. Right? So this requires an active choice, an active commitment to it. And not kind of like once and done, it's sort of daily, you know? It's kind of like, 
if you commit to volvitude, you have to get up every day and go like, oh, it's a new day, yeah. And check yourself. It's like, am I, am I, am I still committed to this, to being that human being? Not whatever else may, may you know. And, and many of us, you know what's very human of us to do? is like, if all they gonna do that, I'll sure will. Well, that's not modeling. That's like beyond, behind, like follow, right? This is, this is so, so this again, this is a choice. And it has to be a choice that's not conditioned on what anybody else may be doing, right? Not other, you know, classmates, not people at work, not people in the community, not whoever, you know, pick anybody. This must be unconditional. As in, you know, like, I, one word there may be standing out is like, well, how can there be unconditional trust? She burned me. <laughs> uh-huh. She's not to be trusted any longer. She must earn it back. Or forgiveness, right? Well, first, he's going to read my mind and figure out what it is that I'm mad about and beg for <laughs> forgiveness, and then I will forgive. Yeah? Conditions, 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 conditions. Every philosophy that worth anything for the past 5,000 years tell us that it's conditions, essentially, that, you know, lend us. And we find ourselves in the situations that we live. We find ourselves living in the world uh, that we see in front of us. It's because each one of us conditions our choice of being better, essentially, on somebody else. We give power away to somebody else. If only they do this, I'll be better. If only they act in this way, I'll be better then. Well, somebody has to start, like, somewhere. So the reason we built this company, the reason you're all sitting here, is because at the very heart and center of it is this notion that we together can build a better world. It is possible. And nursing as a profession is likely the, the kind of just the fastest way, I think, to get there. Imagine if this huge profession in the country all of a sudden is committed to this constantly, day in, day out, no matter, no matter what you encounter, no matter, no matter how tough it becomes, you're committed to being a better human being. And then through that, bring better health about for everybody that you encounter and understanding what health and wellness is all about. By the way, physical health is just the beginning of what you have to learn about. And managing physical health is just the beginning of it. Wellness has multiple dimensions. Anybody knows how many? <coughs> Come on. Social and emotional. Yeah, oh, yay. Some, somebody's been studying. <laughs> yay. Children. Yeah, children, right. <laughs> You have to, yes. Emotional is part of wellness. Social well-being is part of it. Occupational is part of it. That's why, you know, being an accountant to some doesn't feel like a line, right? That feels like some, there's something bigger, better. There's something else out there. So when you find that, and hopefully for all of you as a, a current nurse or a future nurse, this occupation provides all of the meaning in the world and fulfillment and all of that because that is what, what occupational health is all about. It's, it's being, able, being able to connect to what you do. And most of us are captive to work, right, our entire life. Again, if anybody is independently wealthy out there, uh, let's talk. Uh, but other than that, we are captive to work. So spending the vast majority of your life doing something that you don't connect to, and you don't feel in your heart and your soul, and you, you're not passionate about, ah, it's wasting your life, wasting your soul. So occupational is another. Financial is the thing that most people in this nation never achieve. Financial wellness, 
financial freedom. So that's why I'm saying make the decision about this financial commitment very, very carefully, right? Because, because you, you, you already not independently wealthy. I am pretty sure all of you have some debt that is sitting out there, you know, over your head, monthly stuff. You don't need to, unless, again, unless you commit to certain things, don't make it worse for you. So make a very, very informed decision about this. But again, back to what Nightingale is about. Look, I, uh, I am a nurse, as Semi pointed out. Um, I've, been, uh, I've been a nurse for over 30 years now. And it's, it, you know, it, 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 again, it's the best thing, the best decision that I could have ever made for me uh, in my life. And, um, but, you know, and, and, but at a certain point in time, I, like, I started asking myself, like, what, how, how can this passion that I have, how can, how can we, like, together harness this thing that we have as nurses and then, and then improve things for others really, really, really through not only, again, through addressing public policy, right? Some of you, and we're going to talk about this in the future of nursing workshop, I mean, I hope that some of you will become politicians later on. I hope so, because then you can speak from your humanity. If you're committed to this, you should be a politician. Then you'll speak from your humanity. You will speak from your knowledge. You will speak from your, from your profession. Health, at the end of the day, health of the nation is what's going to make everything else better. And we are not as in the United States, we're not nowhere near as healthy as we a should be to have like everybody's life to be being better, and and we certainly are not getting the outcomes for the incredible amount of money that we're spending on healthcare. Our outcomes nowhere. So we're going to talk about all of that in the future of nursing. But part of the answer of why we build this and why you learn some other things and different things and why we're asking you day one to come into something is because I, you know same old doesn't work it hasn't worked the legacies are not being built as to what truly we as human beings can accomplish so 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 that first statement i embody what does it mean you think It's like it's like my Siri, you know. Like, um, like there's no controlling them unless you completely unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so what does it tell you? That top, that top. Call it core values. What does it tell you? What does the word embody? Take it in, embrace it, and take it into what you can embrace it, right? It, it, but, but, but it's embracing what's already there. Yeah. Embody means it is there. You don't have to dig for it. You, don't, you, you know exactly what it means. You know exactly what love and expressing love, you know exactly what that means, right? And yet, and yet, again, as humanity, we find ourselves in this place of where that is reserved for most special people. And you may be special today. But maybe not tomorrow. Again, condition, 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 constantly. So all that top statement says is let it shine. That light is within, let it shine. Especially when you're a nurse. You have to. In order to get to any good outcome with those that you work with, you have to let your love and all and kindness and courage and all of these other things that are there and forgiveness shine constantly. Patience and trust me, you will encounter it as learners. You will encounter it in practice. When somebody, and it depends on the setting, right? But when somebody gets to you and is in need of your care, they're probably not having their best day. Everybody's with me? 
and they probably are so they're in pain they're, they're I mean they're suffering and then imagine if all of us constantly say ah, I get it you're a human being you're allowed not to have a good day every once in a while by the way all of you are allowed not to have a good day every once in a while but you have to you know we'll talk about it later of how to deal with that but, but yeah, imagine if all of us will, you, you know, it's like, even if we get, you know, like some, some, some word comes out that are like, that, that is not great toward us. Imagine if we go like, oh, okay, you're a human being, you're having a really bad day. I get it. Forgive him. Let's move on. This world would be very different if every one of us as human beings did this. But the health of this nation would be very different if all of us as nurses do that constantly. So think about that. Th this middle portion, it's kind of like, we're talking like philosophical, big life, why you hear type of stuff. If you stumble into it one day, and you can answer that question for me, why you hear, like with all certainty, Wow, that legacy I want to see. Because all of us are here for a purpose. We just have to find it. Okay, that. And and let me let me tell you another another really really important thing about nursing. Um, with all of this, nursing nursing, being a nurse really and and serving others is a privilege. It is, right? It, it's it's. The profession that we're, we're building together and will continue building together really, really, really calls for us being, being at our best, constantly letting the light shine. Also, though, remember this. Nursing is the pretty much best socioeconomic mobility vehicle in this nation. It can allow people from poorer communities to to flourish and to get to financial health and all of that. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. It demands a lot. Becoming it is not easy. It's tough, really. But wow, what it brings with it is absolutely amazing. So we build this to this institution. And the fact that, you know, I don't, I don't know if like, uh, let me check. Let me check if I got my answer. Um, from uh, uh, on the numbers. Okay, so yes, I did. So we have 585 learners across the nation right now, and they are coming from 31 states. Wow, I know, yeah, yay! Making a difference. And many of our learners come from smaller communities, come from poorer communities come from communities to, to before this organization for whom this education wasn't accessible at all. And so it is really, I, mean, I you know, I, I, I rejoice in that like all the time, the fact that I, I, I can, you know, and I like, look, I came, I came to this country as a refugee and, and with, with nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, but having Having you know, I didn't have a license. I just had, had completed my uh, nursing education uh, before that, and so it allowed me to, to do you know to, to be, and 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 allowed me to get to this American dream that everybody was talking about. And so I and 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 my part of my reason for for getting this you know built and getting so many other awesome people contributing to it, from faculty to staff, every, everybody, is, is, is this belief that I, mean, I can change the world. Do you believe that you can? That's, you know, do you, like I, I hear this legacy thing, I hear this making a change thing, and do you believe that you can? And if not yet, what will it take for you personally and everybody out there to start believing that you have that power that you can you can be the change that you want to see but in order to see the world be better kinder more forgiving more trusting 
more feeling more like a community. We have to start here, right? You have to start there. So, so that's important. I want to talk about act. I act. Because act is an actual action. And it does require a choice as well. So we're going to go through these four values and really talk through what that means. What is growth mindset? What does it mean? When, when, when you say somebody has a growth mindset, what does it mean? Open to change. The what? Open to change. Oh, open being to open change. to change. Absolutely. So, so it start, that's kind of like the basic requirement. You have to be open to changing and evolving and growing and changing your mind. You know, I know many folks, thank you social media, uh, you know, in their early 20s, the, you know, the prefrontal cortex lobe still is not fully formed, you know, in very, very early 20s. And yet folks get to their early 20s like, that's it. I know everything there is to know. I never have to change my mind ever again. I was born this way and that's it in terms of like being a like political party affiliation. Take, take that for, you know, this is the plan. This, this is my plan. I don't think, I don't have to think ever about it. Uh, I challenge you to, you know, think about it because you, you know, as a human beings, we have an incredible capacity to evolve and change and change our mind and learn and all of this and being open to it is, is the beginning. Then what? Growth mindset. By the way, by the way, this is science, this is psychology, human psychology and, and growth psychology, uh, uh, human, yeah, human positive psychology, which, which proves pretty much conclusively that growth, that human growth, human evolvement, human elevation is our highest motivation as individuals, individual human beings. We're motivated by growth like nothing else, right? And, 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 and take, it, take it for that. Okay, so you're open to it. You understand that whether you you know, want it or not, if you're a human being, you're drawn to it, you're motivated by it. Then what? Growth mindset. Learning. Yeah, then actually doing it. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. You have to actually do it in order to grow at all, in order to evolve absolutely anything. It, it, it's in the, in the essence of the word change. If you want change in your life, guess what? What needs to change? Yourself. Absolutely, positively. That's where, that is where change comes from. For everything around you is through you. So you open to it, you learn, you continue going through it. What else though? I've already mentioned it before, but it's an important Reminder: an important thing to discuss. What else is baked into the growth mindset? What has to be there? Action. Action, yes. Other people, yeah. You know, other people can help, right? It's yours to drive. By the way, this is how it works here. Your journey is your journey, educationally. We provide you all of the resources resources you would ever need to go on your journey, right? We provide people, facilitators, faculty, support staff that are there, advisors, counselors, so on and so forth, to facilitate, help you facilitate your journey. The journey is yours, however. We cannot, again, remember not Oprah, cannot do it for you. You have to do it yourself. Everybody cool with that? Yeah? So sometimes it's like, well, I don't want to. Like this pending graduate that we're talking about. Well, I don't know how else to help if you don't want to. There's like, here's, here's my, my magic ants. As soon as you don't want to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm powerless against that. Okay, so, so other people to help you and navigate and facilitate this journey. This is, by the way, we're calling you learner. Yeah? Because what is a student? Anybody knows? What is a college student? The what? A learner. Uh, <laughs> two different words, right? So college student to me, it's like this 18-year-old kid that just completed high school, 
And then took a year off, you know, backpacked through Europe, <laughs> whatever. And then, and then kind of returns and then moves as far away as possible from mom and dad. Yeah, lives on campus, drinks beer for about six years, and party, this, you know, TikTok posts and says, all of that good stuff, gets the paper at the end of the day, and then moves right back in with parents. Yeah, describes students very well. What is a learner? Yeah, it's, 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 it's somebody who grows, and somebody who learns, and somebody whose job it is to drive that forward, right? Everything else is, you know, left aside, like all of the stuff that, that um, you know, I'm kind of warning you against doing if you make a commitment to continue, continue uh, being here. What else within a growth mindset? Passion has to be there, yeah, but there's something very, very important that, again, in, in, in our society somehow we've forgotten how important it is and how good it is. Sacrificing? Sacrificing, yes. You have to, we talk about, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you grow, when you grow, what inevitably happens every once in a while? You transform, yeah, but every once in a while, this happens when you commit to growth, when you commit to learning. When you, yeah, you fail. Every once in a while, you fail. And that is all right. Because failing is a very human thing that we do. We all do. We all fail at some points in some things, right? We're not just, we're far from perfect. And so expecting to go through any kind of elevational journey or growth journey without the expectation of some failure is just unrealistic. So expect some of it to happen. Now, the one thing when you fail something, here's the thing that what, what I suggest you don't do because it's not gonna get you anywhere anyway, is to write to Mikhail, which this is this semester. You know, I always use like fresh, fresh examples. Right? I talk about this every single new collaborator orientation. And then inevitably, somebody writes, we the people, you know, whoever we are, you know, the royal we, we don't like this exam. We don't think you should have this exam. Remove the exam. That's their answer to failure. It's like Nightingale College, you guys eliminate the exam now, because I don't like it. Or we don't like it, whoever we are. Uh, what do you think the answer is? Thank you for your suggestion. I really, you know, like really, really appreciate you reaching out. Um, uh, and, and no, we're keeping the exam. What's the better thing to do with failure? Learn from it. Boom, mind-blowing. And how do you learn from failure? You accept it first. Like it happened, right? Just like, might as well be transparent about it. It happened with myself. Because oopsie doopsie. Then what? How do you learn? You say redo it? Find out what you did wrong. Ah, there you go, right. Find out, find the cause. What, what, why? Find the reason why something didn't work on that first attempt. Just redoing it, as in trying to, and oh, it's so human, which, I'll try it again! Uh, and if you're gonna do exactly the same thing, your try looks exactly like the previous one, you're gonna get exactly the same outcome. Everybody good? So something needs to change before you try something again, right? Something in your approach, something whatever. It, it, maybe it's another unsubscribe from some, I don't know. Something has to change in how you approach it before you go at it again. Because otherwise, it'll be over and over and over and over again, and it's the same outcome and the same outcome, and more frustration and more frustration with yourself and more frustration don't do that. 
when you fail, change something, then try again. And inevitably, and you can do it a couple of times, inevitably you will get to the outcome that you would like. Right? Resilience is an absolutely important piece of learning and going to school. You have to, and certainly the profession of nursing. But you have to become, if you're not quite there, you have to become resilient. You have to push through failures. You have to adjust. You have to change. You have to go at it again. So the big, you know, the big Yoda thing, try not, do or do not, applies, right? Every time you go at something, you do it. You don't try, you do it. And then if that attempt doesn't work, you learn from it, you adjust, you do it again. Yeah, everybody good? Please don't approach the school, especially beyond the 5 p.m. on May 13th, mountain time, uh, with this, oh, I'll try. This is the 10 days or whatever it is between today and that Friday for you to try. After that, you have to do, and you have to employ the growth mindset to do it. Transparency, we all make errors. So, I mean, this is, and I already mentioned it, but it's all sorts of other things as well, right? If something is in your personal life, something in your relationship with your, whomever it is, significant other is not working, you know, please do not wait for them to like, figure out why you're mad. Go to them and say, hey, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> but this is, this is what happened. And this is how I'm feeling. Da da da. You know, oh, our relationships would be so much better if we actually talk to each other. Yeah. Like, okay. Don't do this. You're a horrible fact. All my problems is because of you. Mm mm. Nope. Mm mm. Others are doing just fine. Throw that. All your problems is because of you. You just have to be transparent with yourself <laughs> as well. Uh, to do that. So then, uh, responsibility, whose job is it to get through school and pass courses and do all of this? Yeah. Certainly not mine. I've done mine. I have my own stuff to, you know, that I do and commit to and do. All of that, so is the faculty, so is everybody else. Your job is being responsible to your commitment. That's why that commitment that I'm talking about is absolutely, incredibly important, committing to this committing to you, committing to whatever future vision of you and your family and your community and whatever else that you have, now you have to commit to it. In order to help you to do that, here's homework number one. Yay, everybody. Everybody wins. Uh, those, those people in the cyberspace as well. First homework, you, you must do it before 5 p.m. if you decide to continue. If you don't write to the registrar or whoever, like uh, an advisor, learner support advisor, that, you know, thanks but no thanks, I tried it, I don't like it, I'm going. I'll find something else, something easier, architecture perhaps. Um, I, I don't know if that's easier or not. I'm just, you know, accountant. <laughs> whatever it may be. Uh, so if you don't send that, then what you must send is a, and it doesn't need to be, you know, like a very well worded essay of, you know, 2,500 words, no. A paragraph, a paragraph that tells you and, and the reader of what your vision of your future is. What are you trying to get out of it, right? This thing that we started with the why, the question, why are you here? Write it out. This is what I see. I see being a role model for my kids. I see helping my community. I see driving change forward. I see all of that. So you send that to your learner support advisor. Okay? Um, and, and again, if you haven't met them yet, they'll be, they'll be in touch what, shortly. So you send it to them. Uh, they will absolutely use it against you. Every single time you go like, Ah, it's so hard. It is so difficult. Please make it easier. They'll be like, yeah, it is hard. Hmm. Mikhail told you so. Mikhail told you none of us are opera. Yeah? 
But does this, whatever it is you've written, is this still valid? And guess what? Make it valid now. Make it valid from now until you're through the school with license in hand in that dream job or whatever it is that you're wanting to do with this education. So write it out and, and, and then for you, after you've written it out, you know, uh, print it if you typed it in and then you know, like, you print it or you can handwrite it and then send a picture to the, the, um, your counselor. Um, then tape it. The best place is, you know, uh, whatever wall is opposite your toilet and home. <laughs> yeah, the door, the wall, or whatever it is. Because inevitably everybody, you know, at least like, you know, a few times per week you have to <laughs> sit there and, and, and look in the opposite direction. Make that be there as a constant reminder. Do it. It will help. If, it is const if it's constantly visible to you, if it is constantly transparent to you of why you're doing this, why you're making this incredible time commitment and financial commitment and all of that, it is going to help you when, tough gets, uh, when times get tough. And inevitably, times will get tough. Like a couple of times through, through, through the program, right? Because it's not just that, it's your life that's happening in parallel to it. The world is happening in parallel to it. it, it you know, our learners that have been enrolled through the pandemic. Imagine getting enrolled in uh, January of 2020, and then in March, have to like change everything about everything in order to, to be able to continue. Wow, they'll be graduating. I mean, not, all, not everybody. You know, but make that statement be as strong as possible to pull you through those times, because they will come. You know, I don't know what they are for you. I don't, I don't know how, but those times will be there. So make sure that you're ready for them. Finally, building community. Building community with each other. That's why in the beginning here, I was like encouraging people to mingle and talk and kind of like, you know, going yay because you, you know, that's a community already. It's a support system already for all of you. You're all local around here. It means you'll see each other at the uh, uh, Sophie rotations and so on. You will be in the same classes and the same sections online and, and, and so on. So, 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 and you'll meet other people, right? 585 in this incoming cohort, you know, the bulk of whom are in the bachelor's program. So, so start building that community, but build a community with all of us as well, right? It is not simply doing this to anybody. To like, ah, nah, 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 eh, ah, I don't want to hear, eh. That's not building community. So think of what that means. If you want better, if you want better community, if you want to live in better, you must build. It is not going to just appear. And the but one thing that I know that we absolutely can. We can build better together if we commit to it. But this, this is a tall order. This requires commitment like no other. To you, to everybody else, to the world, to the nation, to humanity, to your future patients. Right? You have to know your stuff. That's another good thing, good, good reason to learn. In order to be credible, with anybody else that you ever talk to in order to be able to change public policy later on, you know, when you run for the office, you have to know your stuff. You can't just, you know, so, so although, although C plus, or whatever it is, I think it's C plus, B minus maybe in some courses or something like that, uh, is a passing grade, that's like barely, barely, barely getting there. So please don't set that as your target. Because you will never become as cred credible and as knowledgeable. And, and you will nev never be able to reason as well through whatever it is that comes your way uh, if, if you set it at that level. 
set it high, then see where you land. And if you want a better outcome, you do what? Set it high. You set it high, and if you didn't get to the, the first outcome on the first attempt, you change something, you go at it again. You know? It's like that exam that nobody likes. That is a progress requirement. That's on a catalog. You're all signing. Like, yeah, I understand. Beyond like assignments and things like that, and fun things, fun stuff, goggles. Everybody excited about that? No? Oh, yeah, no. Most of you are going to be, you know, loving it within 20 minutes. Yeah. Some of you, for those of you who, you know, some of you is like, no, I get too dizzy. That's fine. You're going to do it in 2D. But, but give it a shot. It's like, woo! Very excited. Anyway, so through all of that, all, all of the tools that, that, that you use, continue pushing, continue learning, continue, continue, continue growing. And remember this. Remember that commitment. So at the very end, and here's how you start your statement, your vision, uh, future vision statement. I commit to this in my future. Bullet points or narrative or poem, whatever it is. And if it's a cool poem, then TikTok it before you unsubscribe. Uh, I commit to that in my future. Yeah, everybody's good. And the second part, I commit to evolve it to. It is together. You, if you are choosing to become a part of this organization, a learner at Nightingale College, this applies to you. It applies to all of us collaborators. Again, perfection is not expected of you. Figuring it out when you were, when, when something goes wrong is expected, and how to go at it again, right? So please do, uh, commit to that. So uh, let me see my list, whether or not I talked about everything that I meant to talk about. Give me a second here. Oh yeah, th th this is, this, this is, um, this is an important, um, thing is that uh, learning happens best when, who learns best actually? Children. Why? <coughs> They're resilient, that is true, you know, it's like you're like, no, don't put your fingers there. They're they do it. <laughs> they learn by experience, you know, they fail. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. I won't do that again because that hurt. Uh, whatever it is, so they're resilient. They they, they, they they fail. They get up. They 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 you know they learn from their failure, move on from there. What else? Isn't it because a large part of the brain isn't developed yet, so all the synapses are firing? And right. Everything. It's like a lot so of like and you know like all of that happening in their brain. I mean, it's curiosity, right? It sort <laughs> of like gets them to 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 go and, and learn things and learn. Yes. Sorry. Quick question. Yes. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. And we're, we're almost wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, please. Gosh. Yeah, I didn't mean to, like, tell you to hold, like, forever. No, when they, hey, everybody, when nature calls, like, you, and you have to go. So, so, yeah, because curiosity is constantly cultivated because, and, and look, as adults, we constantly forget that that curiosity is there. We are curious beings to begin with all the time. So engage that curiosity in your learning. Engage, in, because that'll ask why. Well, why is that, right? Remember, remember the kids, like, mommy, why? And you give an answer, and they're like, well, why that? And you give an answer, and like, well, why that? And on and on and on, to about five whys. They're like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> so this, this is what I encourage you, do the five whys rule. Right, like ask constantly, ask well, why is that, and then and then it'll help you. It'll engage curiosity. It'll help. It'll help at stake. It'll help you learn. So that's um, really all that I had as far as what I wanted to talk about. Uh, 
we here in this room, we can stay beyond the broadcast if you want to chat or whatever. Oh, there's some questions? Oh, okay. So we'll take some questions from there, and then uh, you guys think about your questions, and then we'll come back, and then we'll wrap up. So another few minutes for questions. Yes? So Callie from Vegas asks, what kept you motivated in getting where you are today? Wow. That's for me. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's a great question, Callie. Um, it, look, it, it's, it's, for me, finding my passion, right? It, it, that, that was, and I, I, I stumbled into nursing, uh, not so much by accident. I wanted to be a doctor when I was a kid. And then I was like, but I, I, don't, you know, I don't know if I like people. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do this. Oh, whatever, and it's a big commitment, so I, let me try nursing. And as soon as I started nursing school, I was like, oh, wow, this is this, like, I, I, I found the passion for it, found the passion for care, for, found the, the, the compassion that is nursing is, is incredible. And, and, then, and then learning along the way to that, you know, figuring out this, I, I, this, is, this is very early in my career, and this is how my career progressed. If not me, then who? Like, who is going to do this, right? If I won't make it better for my patients in, on my shift, or my clinic, or my facility, or, or my community, or, or who's going to do it, right? And other people perhaps will too, but the more the merrier. But I, so, so for me, it was sort of like, it is my responsibility. Those act values are, you know, that are very near and dear. The entire body to say them that, that I was showing. Very near and dear to, to, to my heart and, and, and my passion. But, but that's, that's that, is just, I want to see at the end of the day, I know this. I know that a better world is possible. I know that better communities are possible. I know that, 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 that poverty can be eliminated. Like, I know all of that absolutely without, without any doubt. And the only thing that it takes is me doing something about it, and me becoming better, and me driving that change forward, and, and, and me committing and, and going through impossible things, and pushing, resiliently pushing through stuff. That's, that's, at the end of the day, that's what it takes. I want a better world. I will build a better world, because I can. I know that those embodied values, that, that I know the love that I am, and I know the love that you are. And so it is absolutely, absolutely possible. And so, so, so ending up here, it I, like I didn't know which way it was going to go. We started it from scratch, um, uh, it, it, you know, eleven years ago, and I, and I've been here for uh, over ten. And so the the yeah, but 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 sort of building it along the way, and then inviting inviting other people into the journey, and saying, hey, together we can do impossible things incredible things. We can change the world. It, it, we, we just have to we just have to go for it. Right? Try not. Do. Or do not. So yeah. That's my answer to that. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, I have a couple more. Angela says, how do you push through days that you feel completely burnt out? Uh, you know that piece of paper that you tape? Like <laughs> <laughs> across from your from your toilet. Yeah, so like you have to look at it. Uh, that helps, right? So I don't like, it, I mean, I used to, that, that was a really visual cues were important early on in, in my career or starting something and attempting something. But then, but then it's like that cue is here all the time. I like, I see, I have the, this vision of, of better, just better, better, better humanity, better health, better world, better, better country, better economy, all of that. And, 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 and when it gets really, really tough, you know, our egos are really pre-programmed to feel really, really sorry for ourselves and doubt ourselves and, and, and shame ourselves for not, for not attempt, achieving on the first attempt and doing all of that. It's the ego, right? It's like it loves wallowing in all that stuff. And then all you have to show is that no, 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 like my commitment is still there. I like I still see it, and don't you know nothing is going to stop. And so and and yeah, and you're allowing yourself a day 
of, you know, at Nightingale we have these wellness days for all the staff when we say, hey, feel like you feel like you're falling apart, take a couple of days, go get a massage, whatever, I don't know, like, run in the forest. I mean, <laughs> whatever works for you, window shop for product. I, like, uh, <laughs> But, 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 but it's allowing yourself to be a human as well, right? It is human. Not, not achieving the first time is human. Failing is human. Not, not, being, not being absolutely best all the time is human. It's just how you deal with that, how you pull through that. That's what builds resiliency and that gets you to the outcome that, that, that you see gets you to that vision. Um, Josephine asks, what does your morning routine look like to make sure you have a successful and accomplished day? Is there a mantra that you say or things you do to keep you going? Mm. <laughs> Morning routine, it I like, okay, it takes me hours. The, the, the thing that, look, and, <laughs> and, and this, is, this, is, this is what helps. What, the, this notion of integrating things within your life, right? So I, I, I wake up, I pour a, a, a cup of coffee, make a cup of coffee, and then I sit down and I go to work like immediately from home, you know, answering emails, doing all of that. It allows me to kind of like, you know, like set, set, set things for the day. But then I stop and I'm like, workout time, yay. And then after that, you know, shower and doing all of that. So, so, so finding the integration that works for you, I think is important. And so it, it's, you know, this notion that of balancing everything is not quite, I, I think, correct. I, I think it's integrating things in your life. And yet, and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not really, I have people that are on social media for me <laughs> now. I, you know, you arrive at a certain point in time, so like other people, you know, can, can I help you be visible, or whatever it means. But like, I individually am not, and so I don't scroll through, through I, I limit my intake of, of TV, as well, especially TV that may be uh, uh, triggering, like news. Uh, it, it's like I say, no more than this much, and, and I usually do no more than about 20, 30 minutes, uh, uh, like five days a week. And like certain days, weekends, I don't even touch any, anything that's new, new, you know, news related or anything like that. And so, so yeah, so you learn, you learn to do that. Uh, over time, but but it is important to to integrate your life, and it is it, it is important for me. It's eliminating the distractions. I, it, that, that we have as human beings, where we're you know squirrels are everywhere. Our attention spans are very very low, and the science now shows that they're even lower uh, have, have been lower than the last couple of decades because we're like squirrel, 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 squirrel. You know, and your brain is kind of like yeah, kind of like that kid you know that's firing all the time, and we go you know it's it's constant. You, 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 you know, attention yo-yo that, that you go through. So eliminating some of that stuff deliberately is, is, is what helps me, but you know, and I'm sure Josephine will find her thing that, that will work for you. Anything else? Um, I'm waiting, so if you have any... Okay, any, any questions here before we let everybody online drop off and then, you know, go have a bio break perhaps, some fruit, coffee, and then come back if, if, if um, you want to have uh, additional conversations with me or Audrey or Rob um, uh, or Sam or Nina. Um, no? Good? Crystal clear? Yeah? Are you going to do it? Did I talk you out of it? Oh gosh. I'm miserable. Once again, a miserable failure. I am going to try <laughs> better, better next time. Okay, in all seriousness though, look. Make those commitments, right? Write it out. Make sure it's there, it's visible for you. Have that vision in your head of what, what your future looks like, and then and then and then go for it. That's you know, it's just like Mikey says, just do it uh, because that's an important thing to do. And hope you know, I, I obviously hope to see you at uh, you know, although virtually uh, at the future of nursing workshops, and then uh, at your commencement uh, when, when, whenever that whenever that happens. We have one, uh, one, oh, one, last, one last one, one last one last question. Um, good to end on. Yes. What advice would you give us today? Uh, I, I think all the advice that I had I've already I've already given you. Uh, commit to it, have a vision, commit to that vision, 
have reminders of that vision constantly, and then and then push and, and do it resiliently, resiliently go for it. And so that's 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 the advice. I you know your community needs you uh, in, in, as a as a nurse uh, you know or higher uh, higher licensed nurse. Uh, this this nation needs you. Your family needs you. We need you. I mean, it's like just do it. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys' engagement. Thank you for your attention out there. Uh, best best to you. <laughs>